Hey guys, this is Caleb with DevSlopes, and uh, in this video we're going to be doing a quick interview with at Developer from Instagram. Uh, if you don't know about him, he's an influencer in the programming world. Uh, you should go follow him on Instagram, at Developer. Uh, check him out. His name is Seth Cordovano, and he's agreed to answer a few questions about programming and his learn, uh, learning to program journey. Uh, so question number one is, first, tell me a bit about yourself, your background, your work experience, etc. Hey guys. One of us definitely has a cooler background right now. Am I right? <laughs> Wrong. No, uh, I'm glad we're doing this. Um, Dev Slopes, you guys have you guys are really well known in the community. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, and I'm glad we're doing this. I'm glad we finally got to it. I'm a software and app developer uh, in my 20s, living in New York City, programming full time. Uh, what else is there to say? <laughs> I started a branding and design firm when I was uh, younger. We we're basically building websites in WordPress. Uh, for clients, we'd build business cards, flyers, we'd manage their social media or whatever. So that was called Bridge. From there, I just talked to my business partner one day and I was like, hey, we don't need to be in the same room. I think I wanna to move to New York City, something I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, two weeks later, I had sold everything and moved to New York City. And I came here with a very small amount of cash. Look what I found in my pocket, look! A year's salary, right here! That's what I call them, fun coupons! <laughs> and um, just from selling everything, and um, I made it work. And for the first year I was here in, in the city, I wasn't even programming. I wasn't doing anything with programming at all. Hello darkness, my old friend. I was just trying to get stable. I decided to focus on one programming language, that was Java. I uh, got really far on with Java. And as I was applying for my Oracle certification as, a, as an Oracle Java developer, I decided that I was gonna get a job within that month. I, was, I just said, any job in tech, I don't care if I'm getting coffee for people that are in in the industry, like as long as I'm around it, it'll push me more to keep doing what I'm doing and I wanna stay connected. Within that same week, I got offered two jobs that I didn't apply for. One was the company I'm with now. The second one is was Amazon, uh, which I turned down because I was still new to New York City. Um, I'd only been here for about a year and a half and I wasn't ready to move to San Francisco just yet. Um, yeah. Okay. Question number two is, where did you learn to code? Was it from university, from some books, or an online video course? That's a good question, actually. Excellent question. Um, all three. I'm very big- That's what she said! <laughs> into learning on your own. Um, but I'm also really big into school. <laughs> and I'm really big into video tutorials. <laughs> I'm big into all of it. Whatever works for you. And, and combine, mix and match. You don't have to have just one way. So the way I basically did it was, the first thing I ever did with coding, for real, outside of WordPress, because I was kind of like learning WordPress on my own, I was like into branding myself because I was a branding and uh, advertising or marketing major. Or I was an advertising marketing major in college for like a couple months or whatever. But I was into branding myself, building my own websites through WordPress. I started to learn the PHP in the back, back end so I could start manipulating the themes a little bit more as I chose. Then I started building websites for Fran, uh, Fran, 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 Fran. <laughs> Friends, friends, family, uh, whatever. Whoever, whoever needed a website, and then I started that Bridge Branding Co. And we started building websites a little bit more professionally uh, and a little bit more regularly. And then I got to the point where I wanted to learn more, and so I had started this um, this Skillshare class, which now is known as One Month. Um, it's One Month .com, and it was One Month Rails at the time. So you would learn Ruby on Rails in one month, uh, thirty days. And I took it the first time, it didn't really stick. I ended up taking it a second time, and, fr and from there I had uh, found a way to um, manipulate what they were doing, and my knowledge at that point, into building a social media site called KindFeed, a place where people would share stories of acts of kindness. Uh, and it was really cool, it was kind of, um, it didn't take off, <laughs> but it showed, it showed a lot of my skill and what I had learned, and like I put a lot of time into it, like for three months, I was working on it nonstop. Any minute that I wasn't working, I mean, there's a lot of days where I would do 36 hours on coding it and six hours of sleep. I would get up and just keep doing that cycle over and over. It's not healthy, but I was really into it. And I was, it was like a big project. It was the first big thing that was mine that I was putting onto the world. And um, I'm glad I did it. I'm, I think it's still live. I don't know. I have to check. I'm hosting the site still. I, don't, I, I think. I, I don't know what I do with it. Um, but yeah. And so. Through the time that I was here in the city, after that I had done that, I still hadn't gotten too far with programming yet, as far as being a full-time developer anywhere. I've come to talk with you again. And um, 
I decided to go back to school. And I had taken some programming courses when I was in school because I was an electro engineer major. That's what I became after my uh, advertising and marketing focus. And so I had taken some courses, and I, when, I did, when I went back, I just decided that I was going to focus on uh, one language. So one language, I was going to figure out which one I thought was best and move forward with that language um, specifically in mind and only and only be, and be, basically become a master of one instead of jack, uh, jack of all trades. And so that was Java. And I did Java, advanced Java, and I started, and I was studying on my own during this time too. I was studying outside of it. And that's what really got me a job. Um, I was still using textbooks outside of that. Like I was doing the extra exercises and practices. I was like working through the entire textbook. So I, I'm huge on like using like a video tutorial as like a, as like a big, uh, or like an online schooling as like a, as like a broad stroke kind of general, get, like get a general understanding of the language and then use a textbook to really fill all the holes and refine it and get, and get everything you might've missed. And that's kind of how I see both of those things. They both have a place because I still use, um, if I need to learn a new language, I still use uh, online schooling to, uh, to to get the general idea of it. And then I go back and I hit it with the textbook and we'll do every exercise in the textbook. And then at the end, or I mean every example in the textbook and then at the end do the exercises and make sure I can do at least the medium and hard exercises before I move on uh, to the next chapter. And I just go through and it's very linear and you, you get a very clear understanding. Question number three, do you have a favorite programming language? If so, what is it? And tell us a few reasons why. Yeah, my favorite programming language is Java, <laughs> uh, as of right now. Um, that can easily change. Why? Because I, I liked it when I, when I was learning it because the syntax, it, it's got a very strict syntax. And so it makes it so everyone's, your code is clean and clear no matter what. I can look at somebody else's Java code and I, I can tell what's going on without having to have a lot of comments. Yeah, Java, because of strict syntax, um, I th I just think it's great. It's it's in, it comes native on like ninety five percent of all devices. It's in most all businesses. Like it was just the it was just the better language. I'm currently getting into other languages right now as well. Um, the other general purpose language that I'm like focused on learning right now is Python. Enough is enough. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. Everybody strap in. I'm about to open some fucking windows. This is probably related to question number three, but what language do you program in the most every day? So on a daily basis, the company that hired me, they hired me for one project, and then as soon as I started the day of, they said, no, we actually need you on this other project. So I'm programming primarily in Ruby and JavaScript at the moment. This is the true and impossible story of my very great love, Ruby. Um, they sometimes have me do some front end stuff if like if there's some downtime and you know, there's something I can do. Um, I'll do like some design and stuff like that. But for the most part, no, it's Ruby backend, and then I also do some JavaScript. So I'm just integrating APIs the basically the entire time. They give me an API, something we want to integrate because we have a data app, uh, takes in a lot of information from different places, manipulates it, and gets what we need and, and gives it out to people uh, in a nice user interface. So. I'm constantly just integrating APIs, whatever we need to. I have to go basically read a lot of documentation and figure out how to make it work for us. And I'll get it at least up to a base, um, a base working like model. And then maybe like um, somebody above me will take it over. Or generally what happens is I build it to like a base level where it's working and it's and all the functionality is there and it looks pretty nice. And then it, we move on to something else and we come back to it later and I just refine it. Um, but yeah, Ruby and JavaScript. What are you looking at, nerd? Huh? Question number five. What are your top three productivity tips for getting stuff done? Well, I generally come in at least 15 minutes late. Uh, I use the side door. That way Lumberg can't see me. <laughs> and uh, after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. Anyone who follows me knows this, but like my biggest thing is I'm all about working your ass off for like 16 hours a day sleeping for like six or seven and just getting it done. And that doesn't come naturally to me. So I productivity is a big thing that I've had to battle with um, for a long time. I'd say in a given week, I probably only do about 15 minutes of real actual work. The, but you, you, you overcome it. It's like a muscle, just like anything else. Just like you, you can, your brain can get stronger and smarter and have more endurance just the same way that your muscles can. Uh, as long as you exercise it properly, you know what you're doing. So for productivity, the first biggest thing I think is to put the phone like on the other side of the room. When I'm working here from home, like when I'm working remotely, I literally like that desk that you see behind you, 
my phone's over there at the other other side of the room near the bed, and I'm over here because if it's next to me, I will I will keep picking it up and like messing around. The other thing, um, just start. That's the hardest thing. People keep like trying to build it up in their head, like they don't really know. Worst case scenario, go to your computer and start commenting out what you want to build and like or how you're gonna build it, like whatever the feature is or the app or whatever. Just start writing it down, and from there you'll start getting like some inspiration to like to keep moving, and so on and so forth. The other thing is like when you do that, you kind of break you can break it down into sub steps instead of just big like a big overshadowing like project. And then when you come back to it or whatever, right then or when you come back, you can just look at it and say, I'm going to conquer this step or um, this this line or whatever. And it could be something really small. You can just kind of do it step for step. And that, that makes it a lot easier. And, you, and it's just like how you would do any, anything else in programming. You break it down to steps because it all comes down to a yes or a no. You know, like either you are or you aren't. Um, the third biggest thing that I have found, and this has been a really big one for me lately, Tracking your time. So a lot of times you don't realize how much time you're wasting until you start tracking it. So I, I use an app called Toggle, uh, T-O-G-G-L. Yep. <laughs> I know words, I have the best words. And basically what I do is I, I literally have, um, a, they call them projects the way it works, but I literally have a timer that I can start and stop for everything that I do. Whether it's working on my personal business, whether I'm working uh, for my the company that I work with, um, whether it's, uh, what is it? I gotta look at them all. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I have. It goes down to if, if I have one for watching YouTube, uh, or I have one for when I, when I go to the gym. So like I literally track all that time, and then you can see exactly where you're spending all your time. I guarantee you, if you once you get a timer going for how much YouTube you watch while you're working or supposed to be working, you're gonna realize how much YouTube you're watching, and you're gonna stop watching YouTube. <laughs> uh, not not that you shouldn't watch YouTube. I love YouTube, and there's a lot of good stuff on there, but um. But yeah, start tracking your time. Use Toggle and um, and just track everything. By 1984, the government will have tracking devices on all of us. If the U.S. government decides to stick a tracking device up your ass, <laughs> you say thank you. Because it'll really open your eyes. Question number six. Are there any books that you're reading at the moment? Either programming books, books for fun, any books that you're reading at the moment? Books. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, I'm right here on my desk. Let's get started with these ones. This is me. I'm I'm ADD as anything. So like I have. So I'm currently learning Python. I'm a snag. So I'll start with the programming books. Um, I got. I got um Python, a crash course. I, I did a lot of research on what I thought would be the best books for where I'm at. And this one looks really good. And um, I'm really excited. I'm just cracking it open. I'm actually doing an online schooling right now. Uh, I'm doing an online course for Python. So I'm learning Python now that way. And I'll be cracking this open a little bit more in depth in a little bit. Then I have hacking with Python, because why not? <laughs> and then Python machine learning, which is where I'm going to end up. And so. Yeah, those are my programming books that I'm reading at the moment. As far as other books, well, actually, this one, this one is a great book. This is a great programming book as well. It's about, it's called Cracking the Coding Interview, and a lot of people, a lot of you will know what it is. Um, this is the fifth edition. I think there's a sixth edition out right now, and um, so it looks a little bit different. It's got a green cover, but basically, it has the new one has more. But this one has 150 programming questions, questions that are asked of you, like when you go to Google or Apple or Amazon to apply. And it just takes you through everything you need to know for the interview process. And I recommend this to a lot of people. The coding examples are made to be done in Java, but you can do it in any general language, any um, general programming language. You can do like Ruby or Python or whatever. Uh, so if you do any of those, this would be good. If you're just front end, uh, this would still be good for the, all the other aspects it gives you, but you would probably have a hard time doing the questions until you uh, knew a general programming language. This is the highest one I recommend out of all the books that I have in my library. Tony Robbins, Unshakable. It's about uh, investing money, uh, and not just investing money, but investing money in our marketplace now, and um, basically um, how how and what to do when the market crashes, where a lot of people lose money is because they decided to take it out. But he goes over what to do uh, to make money when most people are losing. Because as you know, a lot of times when the market crashes, that's when a lot of people go from hundreds of thousands of dollars in their account to millions uh, or so on. You know, like they ten they ten times it. 
uh, 10 exit because they buy in when it's when it's really low and it always goes it goes back up. Our market now is higher than it's ever been, so that just goes to show you it only goes up no matter what. And it's really it's really interesting. Um, I love Tony Robbins in general. I'm big into self help and programming. Like that's basically all I read is self help and programming. This is the 10x rule. Uh, I highly recommend this book. I actually listened to an audiobook and then I bought it uh, because it was so good. And it's all about hustling your ass off. Hustling your, you're just hustling your face off, like, and it's, it's incredible. Um, this is the first book that I ever read that I thought was speaking directly to me, and it was more in line with the kind of attitude I have about just working all the time. And it, the ten x rule is pretty cool. It's about like, so for instance, like your personal business, my personal business that I have. Let's say I was just starting out, and uh, I had a um, hundred dollars worth of customers. Um, uh, a, a month in subscriptions for say then like the 10x rule as far as the actual rule goes for that you would try to go from a hundred to a thousand then to ten thousand you would just keep building up until you got until you, you, you that could be your full-time job so you do it on the side until you get there so you go from like a hundred to five hundred then your next goal is like a thousand maybe your next goal is like five thousand it doesn't have to exactly be 10x but that's the general idea it's to just make a big jump and it's also about setting goals that are higher than what you think a lot of people sell themselves short by setting goals that are smaller and they end up reaching those goals only to realize that they could have went bigger. Um, but yeah, two other ones I'm reading right now is Seneca. Can you even see this? Is this showing up? <laughs> Seneca on the shortness of life. Life is long if you know how to use it. It's really good. And it's all about just um, making sure that you're actually getting the most out of your life. And it's, um, it's really, really impactful. And this one I haven't started yet, but this is, is next, is uh, Marcus Aurelius Meditations. So, um, yeah. Okay. Question number seven. Do you have any advice that you would give to a beginning programmer who's just getting started? Yes. Um, I mentioned earlier, focus on one programming language. I get a lot of questions on my Instagram account all day about people ask, like they ask me all, I get the same, I see the same questions over and over. And a lot of the same problems that I'm seeing are that people are focused on too many programming languages at once. They're not becoming a master of any anything, but they're getting a general knowledge of all of them. Problem is when you have a general knowledge of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, Ruby, Python, you know, like all these languages, there's so many of them. Objective C, C, C sharp, <laughs> like Swift. Uh, if you're doing Android development, like if you have all that down, that's cool. But if you, if you if you're spread thin like that, and you're, then you're only on this level for all those languages. All they're going to want is somebody who can do one of those things at a company. You might need to kind of dabble in a few others, but they want to make sure you can do this one really well. So anyone who's even this high or doing this well is going to get the job over you. So if you just focus on that one language and go up, then you find a job in that language. And, and then especially when it comes to learning, then all these other languages become a lot easier to learn because you have a really clear understanding of what programming languages do and how to use them. And so you know exactly what to look for when you're studying a new language. The biggest thing I ever did for like, uh, springboarding my career was mastering Java to a ridiculous level but yeah I just I focus on that and so now every time I look at another language I know exactly what it what it can or probably can do and I can just like quickly look up what the differences are and I know what to look for um, learning a new language is really easy once you've mastered one so I say master a language question number eight what should someone do who maybe is a beginner or who is intermediate and wants to take their programming abilities to the next level so getting to the next level um, is all about your commitment level. So for starters, just commit. Uh, just decide that you're gonna you're gonna do something really big and commit to it. There's two ways you can do that. You can work on a really big project, uh, hopefully with some other people as well, um, and this way you can learn a lot along the way. Or what I say is, if there's like if there's certifications or things or things that you can do that also go on your resume do that. Both of these things will go on your resume, whether it's a project or whether it's a certification. But not only does it force you to really push yourself and you can give yourself a timeline of when you want to get it done, but you can also throw it on your resume so when you're looking for a job, you have something tangible that you can show them that you've done. Question number nine, where do you see technology going in the next five years, uh, maybe the next 10 years, and uh, any programming languages that you anticipate being big players in kind of the next few years? I know that Swift has been becoming very popular. 
Um, I know that React also is becoming a, a really popular technology. So uh, what te technologies or languages do you see becoming very popular in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, uh, I already mentioned Swift and React. And so like, obviously I agree with those answers, but more so than that, um, with VR and AR, I think that Unity programming is gonna be um, one of the biggest things that we see because um, all VR is going to be done with gaming programming. And um, machine learning. Machine learning is big. It's getting big right now. Um, but yeah, over the next five or ten years, I think that'll be one of the biggest things that anyone's doing. Um, and it's going to be, that's something that's going to grow very exponentially. In five or ten years, computers might be teaching themselves. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd have to say um, anything in machine learning, which you can do that in pretty much any general um, programming language, Again, Python, Java, Ruby, um, the C's. Um, but yeah, check those out. The last question, number 10. Um, what is the most contrarian viewpoint you have in the tech world? Uh, like, what is something that you think or something that you believe that most other people would disagree with? I don't think that there's a lot that people would disagree with me on. Um, like, I don't think that I have any, like, specific point of view that other people... Um, hold too differently. Um, I will say one thing that I've noticed though, there's been a there's been kind of a big trend like of people like posting their like at least on social media from what I've seen like people posting their setups and like I get a lot of questions about what computers work and what don't. Like you can program on a Raspberry Pi. Like just because you don't have four monitors or whatever, like a real programmer just programs on their laptop. Like if you have those things that they're they're helpful, but. Um, I know a lot of people keep striving to get bigger and better setups, and, they're, and they save like a half a second every minute or whatever, because you're, you're you don't have to like swipe to like pull to see something. You just like look over, and that's not hugely important. It's it's convenience, but just remember that you can do everything on your laptop, <clears throat> or like a thirty dollar uh, Raspberry Pi. Like this is a computer. Well, this is a gaming system for like Nintendo and Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games using RetroPie, but. Um, I can't show you the other one because it's plugged in. Yeah, the other one's plugged in. But I have another one. It's got a 64 gigabyte memory card, 512 gigabytes of RAM, and I literally hook it up to my monitor, and I can do almost everything. It's a little bit slower, but I can program on that, and it's 50 bucks. It's not a $2,000 computer, plus like uh, three $500 monitors each, or like a $1,000 uh, Asus or whatever. So you can you can program for really cheap, and people need to remember that. Like this is one of the easiest industries to get into. Even though there's a lot of cur uh, up curve, like learning curve, when you're getting into it because you have to study. As far as like what's actually stopping you from learning, there's not much. There's a lot of resources online. There's a lot of cheap resources that you can get through places like Dev Slopes and like other places, and you can you can program for for pretty pretty cheap. And most of us already have a computer anyway, so I don't even know why I'm telling you this. <laughs> you can just use whatever though. All right, guys, it's been real. What is real? How do you define real? And that sums up our interview with Developer. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, be sure to go follow Developer on Instagram. And also make, make sure to check out DevSlopes, our new learning to code apps on iOS, macOS, and tvOS. We've provided links at the bottom of the video. Uh, and make sure to check us out at devslopes.com. I'm Steve Hawkey. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to Developer page. The Hawkmaster signing out.